Hey socialites, welcome back to my channel and if you're new here, my name is Ariel. I create beauty and fashion videos as well as lifestyle vlogs. So make sure to hit the subscribe button so you too can become a socialite. So today is day 17 in Vlogmas, meaning that I'll be putting out a video every single day in the month of December. So let's unlock day 17 in our advent calendar. See what we got for day 17. So 17 is right here in the middle. So we got a Reza Be Obsessed Love Me Leave-In Conditioner. So it is a spray leave-in conditioner. Let's see how it smells. It smells like men's cologne mixed with a little florally fruit in there, but then it's musky like men's cologne. So comment down below if you guys have tried this conditioner before. So today is gonna be a pretty cool video. I don't know if I can consider this for beauty beginners because I feel like anybody can probably take away from this, but basically I just washed my brushes. So I have about 70 brushes right here in front of me, including sponges. And I just wanted to kind of go through some of my brushes and let you guys know what I use certain brushes for. So brushes are really important to the makeup application process I do feel like even if you don't have the best technique in makeup like the absolute best technique to achieve the face that you want or maybe there's a picture or a person you have in mind like I want my makeup just like that person's makeup but you don't feel like you can quite achieve that look I feel like if you have the right products and when I say products, that does include the brushes you need. So products and tools, if you have the right makeup products and tools, even if your technique is not the best, you are gonna get the best look if you get what I'm saying. If you have the things you need and the best tools, nine times out of 10, you're gonna get a lot closer to your ideal look than not. I'm just gonna go through some of my brushes. Comment down below some of your favorite brushes and also comment down below and let me know if you've tried some of these brushes as we move along. Okay, so first we'll start off with the sponges. So a few sponges that I use often are, so the Real Technique sponges. I actually have more of these sponges than any other type of sponge. I just feel like this is a really good beauty blending sponge. When you use beauty blender sponge, you completely wet them in water and squeeze every drop of water out that you possibly can. The sponge then expands, sort of blows up, and then it's able to easily pounce off the skin, and that's how you utilize them. But I just feel like for the price point, usually you can get these in like anywhere from a two to a five pack, and they're pretty affordable. I think they, they're they usually around five to eight bucks, and they really do a good job. I'm talking about up there with Beauty Blender brand quality jobs. So these are the beauty blending sponges from Real Techniques. So the pink one here, I do have a few of these as well. And this is the, from the actual Beauty Blender brand. And these are really good. You use them the same way. You completely submerge them in water. You squeeze all the excess out and then you pounce it off the skin from there. Um, I do feel like with this past um, Sephora sale that the beauty and comment down below if you bought any of these but the quality of these the the texture of these don't feel like the regular beauty blenders that we usually um, get from Sephora and when I've washed these the new ones from the VIB sale I noticed that uh, when I squeeze them out a lot of pink dye is coming out into the water like the color it and you know I've never had that issue with the beauty blender sponges before but I've noticed now when I wash them them, they really drain you know a lot of the color comes out of it which is you know different that's never happened before out of the many years I've used them but nonetheless this is another brand that I use often this one is gonna run you about $20 per sponge um, so like I said you use it the same way this one is a little smaller than the real technique sponge so I'm able to kind of especially under the eye get a little bit better precision with this one so that's how the sizing sort of makes a difference but the texture is really what you want to be concerned about because the softer the more it pounces off the skin and gives you a more smoother blended look another beauty blender product that i wanted to show you guys about is a product that i've only been using for about a month or two now this is the power pocket puff 
from the Beauty Blender brand. And you just put your fingers through the little straps at the back and you use this for powder products and you just sort of set your under eye or you can set your entire face. I feel like this is definitely a game changer in makeup. Um, oftentimes when you use like a makeup brush to set under your eyes, sometimes it's not even because you're sort of laying it down, picking it up, moving over, laying it down. And sometimes it can be a little splotchy if you don't get it even enough. But I feel like this just pretty much does everything for you. You dip it in your powder and it just covers so much space very easily and you just get a very flawless under eye with this I also washed these for the first time yesterday and they clean out really really easy so that's a plus I know foundation brushes are probably the most important brushes that a lot of people are would be interested in seeing beauty blender sponges are really really good for foundation application so let me tell you the difference between using a beauty blender sponge and a makeup brush a sponge gives you more a sheared out effect you don't get as much coverage even though you can achieve full coverage from a sponge but using an actual foundation brush this is how you build the absolute most coverage because you just pounce it in like this and it doesn't move the product around much at all and it doesn't soak into the brush like sometimes the sponges do you can get product soaked in here so you get the most coverage so if you really want to achieve that just that beat face that full coverage foundation with none of your skin showing through your best bet is going to be to use a foundation brush now there are different type of foundation brushes like this flat one here the paint brush type of foundation brush this is another type of foundation brush this is the one where you literally almost like paint the foundation on I typically don't use these that often I really use these more so for like primers and cream products before I put on my foundation but I do know that some people use these as well these are the type of foundation brushes that you really can build that coverage with um, this is the hourglass foundation brush which is one of my favorite foundation brushes this one here is the Sephora number 70 brush it's dense as well as you can see and so because it's so dense and stiff you can really pack a lot of coverage with these brushes as well another Another one of my favorite foundation brushes is this Real Techniques buffing brush here. Now I really love this brush when you want that full coverage look or if you want it sort of sheer just make sure you only use a little bit of product. This is a really good brush you guys and they last for many years. I think you can get this brush for about $10 to $15 probably or more so around the $10 range and like I said the quality is really really good. It is comparable to the Sephora brushes for sure and then it's soft enough to make the foundation application quick and easy it buffs out really nice and especially for the price this is one of my favorite foundation brushes as well so this one is the real techniques buffing brush so let's talk about setting under the eye so my favorite brush for setting powder under eye is going to be this real techniques setting brush so if you notice the shape of this brush it's very soft and the size of it you can fit it so easily right in this area and this is exactly how I use this brush just like this inexpensive it typically comes in a in a set of like I want to say four or five other brushes in a real technique set for around 20 bucks these are really really good for setting under the eye and it gets it very even I like this I really like this for setting underneath the eye and like I said this one too these two are like my go-to's for setting under eye so let's talk about for contour when I say contour we're talking about like cheekbones and forehead contour so one of my favorite brushes for that is another real techniques brush this is called the real techniques contour brush and just the shape of this is just a just a very medium sized dome shaped brush and just because of the shape you can really go into that cheekbone area and, and really buff that that contour in really nice I use this for cream and powder contour does very well it's so soft on the tip which allows you to really get that flawless blend which is really important when doing contour you don't want just like a stark line you need something that's going to help you buff out and blend at the same time and this one does a phenomenal job some contour brushes are just so stiff and hard that you can get the product on there but blending it out sort of gives you a hard time so that's what I mean when I say even if your technique is not the best if you have the if you have the right 
products and tools you're still going to get that face you're looking for because your products and tools are almost going to do the work for you if you get what i'm saying so that's why i like this one for just that contour area to go in here it applies it and blends it out really easy another brush and this is really new yesterday was my first time using this brush this is the elf contouring brush that i was telling you guys about yesterday this one's really good as well look at the shape of this brush And it's so soft enough on the tip, but then dense enough everywhere else to really get you that good contour in there. And the thing I like about the shape of this is if you look to the side, oftentimes when we do our cheekbones, we want it to be a bit chiseled in this area. And because of the shape of this, I feel like it just creates that for you. And because it's soft enough on the tip, it blends at the same time, like I was talking about with that Real Techniques brush. So this one is good too for contouring. So this brush here, here, this is not a Real Techniques video, but Real Techniques just really does a great job at providing super quality brushes that are very relevant. I feel like sometimes makeup companies or makeup brush companies makes all these cool, unique looking brushes and it's almost like, now what do I do with this brush? Or either the brush is too stiff to get the job done or the brush is too flimsy and when you try to apply the color, it doesn't apply as pigmented as you want. And I just feel like Real Techniques is one of those companies that gets it right but this one is the real techniques deluxe crease crease brush and what I like this for is applying your base or concealer to your eyelid so I like to sculpt my brows meaning taking concealer to sort of clean up the edge and you know that leaves a bit of concealer hanging down from here and so I like to use that to sort of tap and blend that concealer in and even cover the eyelids when I want to do a base for my eyelid before I apply my actual eyeshadow color so this one's real good for that it's still enough to get really get that product on there but then it's soft enough to do the blending as well so this one's a good one for that so let's talk about eyebrows let's talk about cleaning up the eyebrows with the concealer whether you do it over the top or whether you do it under the bottom the most important thing about that would be having a really super precise if you could see how thin and this is really stiff and sharp. It goes stiff and sharp when you turn it to the side. This is a concealer brush. Now, this brush is so old <laughs> that the name came off of it, but what's most important about this is the shape of it. So more so concentrate on the shape of this brush. It doesn't matter if it's bigger. Notice the size difference in this one and this one. This is still a concealer brush that's super sharp and flat. It's just bigger. So we're going for super sharp and flat when it comes to the brows. But the way I like to use these type of brushes is apply the concealer on both sides of the brush. And what that does is force the hairs together really tight. And so when you go in to clean this up, you really get that soft, precise line. I know that some people like to use these sort of angled eyeliner brushes that you use for like cream or gel liner. And they clean their brows up with this. But sometimes these can be a bit thick if you turn it this way. It's thicker on this one than if you turn it this way to this one. You want the one that's more super skinny and when you apply the product it almost just turns into just one little straight thin line and when you have these type of brushes it really gives you that super precision that you need. So let's talk about eyeshadow blending brushes. This is the MAC I want to say 236 brush and this is the MAC 224 brush. So these are some really good um, eyeshadow blending brushes for the crease. These are the, my favorite brushes for applying the crease color. Um, when I want more precision like when you really want that sharp precision with color I usually go for the 230 because if you notice the hairs the white ones a little shorter and denser so when you apply that color it stays in place this one is a little bit longer and uh and a, the hairs are a little bit more sparse meaning that it blows out more color it's not as dense and doesn't stay in place as much so for me this one is better for when you want to do like my eyeshadow look today where it's just sort of a blown out shadow it's not super precise and dark or sharp um so yeah that's the difference between these two and these are two really good eyeshadow blending brushes I also like some of the morphe eyeshadow blending brushes this is the morphe y17 brush as you can see it's another just fluffy eyeshadow blending brush it's it's 
sort of similar to that matte 236 brush and just how dense it is and then it goes fluffy on the end to me this brush here is like the best of both worlds it's stiff enough to get precision but then it's fluffy enough on the tip to get that blown out look as well this is probably one of my top favorite eyeshadow blended brushes as well so lastly I want to show you guys a couple of powder brushes so this one is the MAC 156 brush this is one of my go-to powder brushes it's just a big fluffy powder brush and I just like this to buff in powder all over my entire face is really good for that just to set your whole face and then also the real techniques 400 brush so that's this one here this one's really good as well for just setting your whole entire face these both are really soft they're not too dense the real techniques one is a lot more soft than this one so if you want to pack on color like pack on coverage all over I think this one is good because it's more dense and if you just want it just kind of buffed out like a light dust powder all over your face and you don't want it too packed on I think this one would do good because it's a little bit more soft and blown out so yeah I could go on and on about the brushes I use and how to use them because like I said I have so so many brushes I could barely count them but those are just some of my go-to brushes I hope that you got something from this video if you did don't forget to like comment and share subscribe if you haven't already don't forget it's vlogmas so i'll be releasing a video every single day in the month of december so thank you so much for watching and i'll see y'all tomorrow